Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today talking to you about challenges in web typography. Some thoughts about it. I'm also a little bit nervous because this is my first talk in English on a stage. I've been doing this uh, online, and it's quite different. Uh, but um, actually, I'm super happy. I'm, I want to say thank you to the Grand Shang Foundation for inviting me to share with you my experience in, in the web field. I'm not going to reintroduce myself. That presentation was more than enough. But what I would like to, to add and point out is that what I do every day is I design interfaces and I code websites. As um, working in these two parts of a, a web development process has given me a deep insight of uh, typography, web typography, not only in the visual part, in the aesthetical part, but in the, in the technical one. So we use, uh, we work in, in Asler Design. It's the studio we, we created in the north of Pamplona, Octavio and me, around six years ago. Um, of course, there we designed, well, he designed uh, typefaces. That's his part. Um, we create branding, we create uh, packaging, we create user interface design, develop websites, and a lot of different projects for clients all around the world. And one of the projects that has helped me a lot in my type journey, what I call my type journey, are the creation of the digital type foundries. We have created the foundry for subtypos by Ale Paul, Type Together by Andreu Valius over there, a Nova Type Foundry by Joanna Correia. At the end of the last year, we launched Letter Juice by Ferran Milan and Pilar Cano. And we are working right now in two more. And working in, for a foundry, when you, where you need to uh, display typefaces in the best possible way, not only in the aesthetical part, in the visual, but in the, the technical one, well, as I said before, you need to understand the files, what is inside every phone file, and allow the user to play with uh, typefaces. You need to, to take care of, uh, of um, the activation and the activation of open type features, uh, allow the user to play and, and write their own tests, and a lot of different things that has helped me a lot. And of course, we try to take care of uh, typography in all of uh, the rest of our projects. This is the e-commerce for a small uh, bakery in Pamplona. It's actually a super special place because it's super artisan, everything is handmade, and Every day is a little bit different there. So when we, well, this is actually a work in progress, but when we designed this uh, web page, we wanted to translate and to represent that special day or that uh, special um, difference that you have every day in the physical store. So for that, Octavio created this amazing letterpress form um, with uh, a little bit of uh, code. We are making that every time a user and a client enter the page or reload the page, it has a new configuration of the titles, of the letter of the titles. And with this kind of projects and experiments, I have faced what I call uh, some challenges of, of uh, the web typography. Of course, there are more. Of course, there are different ones. But for me, these three are like uh, basic, are super important. Um, easy to handle and to fix. So let's see them. Challenge number one uh, is related with units. Um, for me, this challenge is that designers and developers should, at least should, use different units for web type setting. For designers, it's super easy, because uh, uh, in a user interface design, the, the programs we use as Figma, Figma Sketch and Adobe XD, for example, we always work with pixels. We set everything in pixels. The screen size, uh, the width and height uh, of our shapes, uh, margins, paddings, everything is set in pixels. Um, even the text, these are the panels, are representing pixels, although they're not a direct uh, word. They are saying that they are pixels. But as developers, we have a lot of different units we can use. Um, actually, there are different uh, because they are, uh, some of them are better for some uh, objective uh, than others. We have what we call absolute units, and these units are related and anchored to the physical world. 
that can be centimeters, millimeters, quarters, inches, because points. And these units are not super useful in the digital world because uh, uh, it's not something we represent here, but it, can, it, it could be super useful for creating a CSS style for printing. That's something we can do. And then we have another absolute unit that is pixels, uh, the same uh, unit that designers use. So maybe we can think, OK, designers use pixels. We have this absolute unit that is pixels. That's a good uh, unit to use in web uh, typesetting. And actually, it's not at all a good unit to use uh, for typesetting. We have better, um, better units, in this case, relative, what we call relative units. There are a bunch of them, again. Um, it can be relative to font, font aspects, or it can be relative to viewport aspects. Of course, we are in a typography conference. The one we have, um, we want, is for relative units. And before I get into, on, I say more about uh, relative units. I'm going to make a quick stop to make a little promo, more promo here, <laughs> more promo here. If you want to know more about CSS units, web typography, multi-script typography, font quality, and um, more amazing um, typography articles, don't miss uh, the book for my type together. So, coming back, the most recommended units for web type. Is, uh, are the, the units M and REM. Uh, probably you all heard about M. REM is a variation, technical variation for us. I talk about uh, this in the, in the book in a more, um, more specific way. But what is important here right now is that uh, one M and one REM is translated by the browser to 16 pixels. And maybe you're thinking right now, okay, if the browser is going to translate relative units two pixels, what is the point of uh, using relative units anyway? Why don't use pixels from the beginning? And the point is that uh, pixels mess with accessibility. Accessibility is uh, that give, we are giving our users the option, the option to access our content in the best possible way. Okay, I want to show you a live sample here. Uh, here, sorry. Uh, this is a super simple uh, web page I created for this purpose. And here you can see two text blocks that look exactly the same. But the left one is created with pixels and the right one is created with relative units. As I said, they look exactly the same. If we use uh, the zooming feature of the browser, they still behave exactly the same. They are, they are growing in the same proportion. But browsers have another amazing uh, tools and configuration to allow users with special needs to access uh, the content in a better way for them. People with uh, visual impairments, motion impairments, can change the default uh, aspect of a, of a browser. And inside this uh, configuration can, can be the font size of the browser. So if I change this right now, here, maybe you have, have noticed that even this uh, font size have, uh, have changed. And I go back to our sample. What has happened is that the, the one set with the relative units has increased based on the new basic font size of the, the browser, but the left, left one has remained the same. That means if we are using pixels in, in websites, we are preventing and avoiding that a user with special needs have their best configuration in our, uh, in our website, in our content. So I like to think that switching from one unit to another one is a super, super easy change. Um, we can do a better place, uh, the digital world, a better place for everyone, a little bit more inclusive, just to, to change in this and not using pixels in the, in the digital world, mostly in the web type setting. Now, let's go back. That was challenge number one. Now it's about challenge number two. That is, we are working in a fluid medium from static tools, okay? This challenge is actually somehow related with the first, first one. The point here again is that as designers, we choose some configurations, uh, static ones, with uh, some uh, sizes predefined. And that's what we deliver to the, to the developers team. But 
The developers team needs to convert that static mockups into something fluid. And something fluid means that it needs to adapt to the size of the browser of the user, OK? Um, a lot of elements in, in a browser are going to fill the empty space that they have available. And that creates some problems that we'll see now. So imagine we are designing this, uh, the, the web page of the book BD. This is not our design. This is just an example uh, for this purpose. So we create the mobile version, the tablet version, and the desktop version. And between them, of course, there are uh, different uh, more resolutions. But beyond the desktop version, at a lot of resolution, there is out there a lot of people using big uh, screens. And when you deliver this to the developer team without any other note, any other information, what could happen is this. This is a screenshot, a screenshot, real screenshot of the Wikipedia in a big screen. And I guess I don't need to say that that line length is super long. It's, it's bad for legibility, and we shouldn't do that. But uh, uh, typeface uh, type text uh, is going to fill always the empty space available, unless we try to control. And I can understand what happened with the Wikipedia, because uh, a lot of web, de web developers never heard about the concept of line length. And they never heard about the 66, 66 character uh, for please and leg legibility. That is something that I learned later. Um, I, I did some things like that before. Uh, shame on me, but I did it. Um, for fixing this challenge, actually, we have another super good uh, relative unit that, in, in this case, is uh, called CH. CH is the width of the zero glyph, in case the, the font size has one. And if not, it's half an M. And with this unit and one single line uh, code, we can fix this problem. And again, I want to show you this. Let me put the configuration again to the regular size. So here we have it. So uh, super long line length. So with just one single line of code, we can say that our paragraph is going to be maximum size of uh, 100 um, characters, for example. And now, of course, it needs more adjustment because we have a lot of empty place here, uh, space here. But uh, with one single line of code, we can fix this problem. But uh, that that is something that need to to start in the design um, team. They need to share this knowledge with the developer one because if not, they are not going to to learn about this. And then we have the challenge number three. That for me is that CSS type related properties are still pretty unknown. What I'm going to show you now is the state of CSS survey, uh, the result for the last year, 2021. The CSS, uh, CSS type uh, survey is a survey that developers fill every year to see how is the state of the industry. Um, we answer questions about new um, CSS font properties, no, not only font, CSS property. Um, all ones and other kind of uh, questions to see how the diverse is uh, the, the industry. Spoiler alert, it's not pretty diverse either. So they have a full um, section for typography. And when I saw this result, I was super, 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 a lot of super pretty depressed with them because actually they are pretty bad and they are going to see now. The first uh, CSS property they asked for was font variant. Font variant is the property in charge of activating and deactivating open type features. And actually, 52.5% uh, of the developers, the great part of the bar, never heard about this property. So we can assume that all of those developers are never going to use open type features in their, in their web projects. And actually, it's getting worse every year. It was better in 2019, and now it's worse. So we are doing something pretty bad. Um, then we have initial letter. Initial letter is a property to create this decorated and highlight the first letter in paragraph. Uh, again, 40% of the developers never heard about it. Font variant numeric is a specific one of the first property. This is in charge of activating 
all of OpenTI features related with numbers, tabular numbers, ordinals, uh, fractions, uh, all style numbers. And this is so sad, not, because, uh, not just because the number, because 70% of the, of the developers never heard about this, but because we have a lot of tabular data in web development. And we have a lot of, uh, uh, maybe not so much, but we have loadings, and we have uh, countdowns with numbers, and having this number not jumping is something pretty good to, to, to do. But again, 70%, never heard. And then we have phone displays. This is a little bit sad because this actually is a technical property. This is something we should know better. The other ones, are related with the traditional typography world, but font display is, uh, has been created only to, to let us control how the web fonts are downloaded and show in the, in, the, in the screen. Because using web fonts means that we are hitting and impacting the performance and the user experience. So we need to control that to get the better experience in our website. 40%, 44% of the, of the developers never heard. Line clamp is, is for creating text ellipses. Again, 49% of the developer never heard. And then we have the thing that we've been talking about, I don't know, maybe the last five years, four, five years, I don't know. We've been talking about, well, we, we've uh, talked today about variable fonts here. We've been saying that uh, they are amazing for performance, they are amazing for animation, they're amazing for a lot of uh, reasons, but uh, the, the reality is that 40% of the developers never heard about in 2021 about uh, variable fun, in web funds. And I'm saying again and again that developers, 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 and I don't think we should blame totally to the developer team. That is something we should, uh, we should talk with the designer team. It should start in the designer team because if a, a designer team never use OpenType feature in, in their proposal, there's something that a developer is not going to use. So that's something that designers need to know what we have available in this medium to be able to show them in the screens. Um, I wish I would have a, a single line uh, to solve this challenge, but uh, I don't have it. Uh, I wish, but I don't. So the only solution I, I think we have is we need to keep talking and sharing about web typography to everyone designers, developers, um, marketers, everyone who wants to, to listen um, in different forums, because uh, I think we need to, to spread not keeping everything in our regular uh, forums, but start talking in uh, different ones. And that's it. Question, thoughts, or ideas? <laughs>